Hey there friends, how you doing? I'm Mr. Bo, and Halo Infinite had its first flight this last weekend, giving players a chance to get hands on with its multiplayer. Now this flight was focused on playing against bots, so you were never actually playing against real people, except on Sunday night, but unfortunately I missed that, as it was only open for about 2 hours, at about 4 o'clock in the morning. It contained a pretty good chunk of its sandbox in terms of weapons, and there were a total of 3 maps available by the final day. Now I was lucky enough to get into this first flight and I pretty much played it non-stop throughout all four days of the flight. Now over the last couple of years with Halo 4 and Halo 5, Halo hasn't really been Halo. So I've been looking to Halo Infinite as kind of a return to form, hoping they could get back to kind of what made Halo Halo and I'm glad to say that 343 have nailed it. Now this isn't throwing any shade at Halo 4 or Halo 5, but Halo Infinite feels like the step that should have come after Halo Reach. This game feels like a blend of everything you loved from Halo 3, everything you loved from Halo Reach, and then that modern polish that we saw in Halo 5. I know a lot of people did like Halo 5's multiplayer, it just wasn't for me. This game feels super smooth, the controls are intuitive, they feel like classic Halo. A big debate when it comes to Halo players is, should Sprint be in the game or not? And I don't think you're ever not going to see Sprint again in Halo, but the sprint in this game is balanced in such a way that you probably don't want to be sprinting or that it's not actually going to benefit you in the long run. The speed increase from sprint is not really noticeable and you appear on radar when you are sprinting and when you're not sprinting you appear off the radar. So if you want to get the jump on enemies you're most likely not going to be sprinting. However that being said sprinting does have a role in this game and that is in terms of sliding. Sliding makes its return and it's probably the best sliding has been in Halo for me. When you first do a slide in Infinite you kind of think what's really the point in this you don't really slide that much but when you start getting used to it and you start realizing that you can sort of sprint, jump, slide in the air, come down on a slope and gain a ton of momentum and you can really start to see how people might utilize this to either get to power weapons quicker or just to get round behind enemies in such a way that they're not expecting it. I think the balance of sprint in this game is perfect and I really hope they don't change it when we get to the full version. Now for the first day of the flight I was mainly using the sidekick pistol which is your secondary mainly because in the last couple of halos the AR has been pretty doo-doo you kind of want to switch off of it so I was using this weapon and it felt super powerful, super strong. My aim was a little bit off. I wasn't really able to find a sweet spot in terms of sensitivity. I changed everything from my sensitivity to my dead zone to my aim acceleration. And it always kind of felt either just too sensitive or just too sluggish. But by the end of the flight, I did find some settings that kind of worked well for me. But anyway, this sidekick was super powerful. I was getting tons of headshots with it against the easy bots. And then the next day rolled around and we got the harder ODST bots and I started dying a lot more. And I realized, oh wait, the AR is actually pretty decent in this game and you're probably better off using the AR as your primary here and then just switching to the sidekick if you need to. Another thing with the sidekick is I always found like I was just one or two bullets short of taking someone out. But I really like how the AR plays in this game. I never felt like I needed to get rid of it instantly, which again I have done in the last couple of Halos. There were a ton of other weapons in this flight and they all felt pretty decent. The BR felt exactly how you want the BR to feel. The sniper felt great. Some of the new weapons like the heat wave was super cool with its two different modes of fire, the vertical and the horizontal. Managed to get a few double kills of that every so often. Now there are only two weapons in this flight that I didn't like and maybe that's just because I'm not very good with them. The first being the skewer, I just found it extremely hard to actually land on people. I think I'm probably going to be using this more against vehicles. I know people were getting some crazy shots with this thing, but for me personally, I just wasn't very good with it. And the other gun was the VK Commando. This is kind of like the newer version of the DMR from like Halo Reach and Halo 4. I don't know if it was in Halo 5, but I just didn't like it as much. You can fire this thing fully automatic or you can trigger tap it. Maybe it's just a controller thing. Maybe it was my sensitivity options. I just felt like I could not control this thing and I would much rather have like the old DMR back. Even trying to just single fire this thing, I just wasn't having much luck with it. So I usually just avoided it at all costs. But classics like the Needler and the Gravity Hammer were tons of fun to use and even the new shotgun which I was a little bit weary of at the beginning, I wasn't getting very many kills with it. I finally got a little bit better at using it near the end of the flight and uh, it was actually super fun. So I don't really have any complaints with the weapons other than those two that I'm just not very good at using. 
Let's quickly talk about the bots as well, because I mentioned that the bots changed difficulty. So on day one, they were marine difficulty, and it was pretty much a cakewalk. You could just run through these guys and get crazy good games. Then on day two, they introduced the ODST bots. Now these guys were a little bit smarter, and I actually found them the hardest out of the three difficulties. But these guys would use grenades all the time. They would enter a battle, and they would chuck a grenade straight away. They would also use equipment, which we'll get to in a minute, like the gravel hook to bring themselves towards you. Fighting these bots almost felt like fighting a real person to some extent. Though they were very predictable, they would always do the same thing at the beginning of every match. Once you played a match and you knew where the bots were going to go, they were always going to go there. So straight off the beginning of a game, if you went to this one location and you just chucked grenades, you're pretty much just going to kill the entire team. And then on the final day, they introduced the Spartan bots. Now I felt like these guys weren't as good as the ODSTs. I was getting better games against these guys. In fact, my first game against the Spartan bots, I went 22 and 4. I'm not entirely sure if there was maybe something wrong with the difficulty of these Spartans, but the bots were super solid, and if you are someone who maybe doesn't like PvP all that much, or you do enjoy PvP but you're just not very good and you don't want to be stomped on by people, I never really felt like I was missing out anything just by playing bots. Obviously these bots aren't going to be playing like real people, they can be predictable at some point, you'd get them where they would just kind of just stand there and take it, and other times they would start shooting you and they would just run off, and you'd run around the corner to get them, expecting them to be there ready to fight, and no, they just continued running away, whereas if that had been a natural person, they probably would have backed off, let their shields recharge, and they'd have been waiting around that corner to then take you on. Now another big thing is equipment. They've changed equipment so you can use it whenever you want. The equipment we had available to us was active camo, which it was alright. I think that's an equipment that'll come in much more handy when you're playing against actual people. You then had overshield, which I feel felt very balanced. I could take out a bot using overshield fairly quickly if they just didn't know how to play properly, and again the bots could take me out if I was just in the wrong situation. The thing I'll be most curious to see in the full game is those players who hold on to overshield until they're in a bit of a sticky situation, back out slightly, pop it, get full shield with the overshield, come back in and then kill whoever was fighting them. I think we might see some things there where maybe it feels a little bit too overpowered, we'll have to wait and see. We then had these like barricades you could put down and you can shoot through them if they're yours, and if they're not yours then you have to sort of take them away piece by piece. They felt pretty balanced, I didn't ever feel like oh this annoying shield is in the way, it was pretty good to put up in a doorway so you could kind of get that advantage against the enemy you're fighting. And then the final two pieces of equipment were the grapple hook which was so fun to use, again the fluidity of movement in this game is so fun, being able to like grapple to a wall, maybe holding the gravity hammer, pulling yourself up to an enemy player and smashing down on them. I think there's going to be some crazy fun custom games only using the grapple hook which I can't wait for. And then you had the sensor dart, which was a pretty neat little piece of equipment. You'd shoot it at a wall, it would ping, and it would highlight any enemies. You could stick this to an enemy player, so if they were running around by their own teammates, it would ping them all. Or you can fire it on your own teammate, and they can like run in there and just ping all the enemies for your team. It seemed fairly balanced from what I saw of it, though the sensor was only available on one map, and I only really used it two or three times. Now before I get into my overall impressions of Halo Infinite's flight, let's quickly talk about the maps as well. There were three maps, we had Live Fire, Recharge and Bazaar. My favourite out of the three was the first map which was Live Fire. This might change when actually playing against real people, but I felt like Live Fire was kind of the best balanced one. It was a very simple map, reminded me of things like the Pit from Halo 3. When Recharge got added, I was not a fan of it to begin with, but as I started to learn more of it and work out how to get up to different levels, I actually really really enjoyed the map. It seems like it would be a great map for a free-for-all. And then Bizarre, the final map that got added in. Now it's a symmetrical map and those are my favourite in games, but this one wasn't clicking for me and I wonder if it is because we were against bots or if it just needed some sort of objective game mode on this map. I think a King of the Hill would make this map super fun, maybe even a Capture the Flag, but it might have been just because we were against bots and they weren't really moving around the map like you'd expect normal people to move around, they were kind of just running into the middle and then dying. The final map was my least favourite, but it was still a super good map. If the rest of the maps in Halo Infinite's multiplayer continue to be like these three maps, we're in for some real classics here, I think. Though I would also like to see some classics brought into this. Maybe some old Halo 3, maybe Halo Reach, maybe Halo 2 and Halo 1 maps added into Halo Infinite would be pretty cool to see. So my overall thoughts and impressions on the Halo Infinite technical preview flight is that I have nothing but good things to say about this game. It was my most anticipated game last year. 
We know it got delayed to this year, we still don't have a date, but it is my most anticipated game for this year, and playing this flight has just cemented that. I haven't had this much fun with a new multiplayer shooter game since Destiny 1. If they can take what we've played in this flight, carry that over into the full game, but give us you know, more maps, more weapons, a load of customization. The battle pass was really well done. I didn't really talk about that in this, but we'll wait and see how that actually plays out in the full version of the game. As I probably said in this video already, and as I probably put in the title, Halo is back and I couldn't be happier. And not only that, this is going to be free to play, so those people who maybe haven't played Halo before are going to be able to hop in and experience this all for free, which I'm super excited to hear what those people think about this as well. Since the flight ended, all I've wanted to do is play more Infinite, and I haven't had that feeling with a game in forever, and I'm hoping we get another flight sooner rather than later, hopefully a couple more before we get the full release. Maybe in November, December, we'll have to wait and see, but yeah, nothing but good things about Halo Infinite's flight. Obviously there were some bugs, some glitches and things like that, but this is a two month old build and it's not a beta, even though people have been calling it a beta. So we can let some of that stuff slide and I'm sure they'll fix that. The one thing that I will say needs to be fixed or implemented, because it's not a Halo game without this, and I've seen it's not in this game, is grenade jumping. You can't propel yourself with a grenade. 343, three. we need to get that in this game because I want to see some crazy tricks and maneuvers with people throwing up their warthogs into the air and landing on somebody's head in a big team battle. So hopefully we see grenade jumps in the full game or in another flight. But yeah, from everything we've seen in this flight, 343 nailed it. I'd love to know in the comments below if you played the Halo Infinite flight, what you thought of it. Did you enjoy it? Did you not? If maybe you didn't get into the flight, are you excited to try out Halo Infinite's multiplayer? Or maybe you are someone who's never played Halo before, but you know it's going to be free to play, so you're willing to give it a go when it comes out, and maybe you're excited to give it a go. Apart from all that though, if you did enjoy this, then click that like button. If you're not already, then consider subscribing for more gaming content and coverage. Also, tap that bell icon to be notified when my future videos go live. Cheers for watching and for hanging out with me. I do super appreciate it. Hopefully, I will catch you in some future content. But until then, as always, make sure you take care. See ya.